Hey there, this is Garbro, the GM for the All Skeleton Party. I just want to take a quick second to tell you guys that I appreciate those of you who enjoy listening to my little campaign and enjoy the skeletons who are playing along with me. I hope that you will continue to listen to this funny little campaign I have set up, and I hope you enjoy the choices that my players are making as they move through this campaign and I hope you don't get too upset with what happens in the end. And I hope that you continue to listen in the videos that come on afterwards. So, let's get rattling, shall we? It may have taken a few minutes, but Agile and Rowdy were able to extricate themselves from their fleshy prisons with mostly grunting being spent. Both of the skeletons made their way towards the front gate. And the first thing they saw was a suspicious skeleton cooing over his horses and telling them what good horses they were. The second thing they saw was what was left of the ogre he had battled. Or what was left of the ogre anyway. Agile Skelton blanched as well as he could with his skull, and motioned at the large fleshy splat adorning the lower portion of the fortification. Ah, oh, mate! You got some of him in the wall! The skeletons worked together to, much to the charging of the gate guards, reopen the gate in order to get the horses and their well-worn carriage through the opening. Sweating gate guards once again rebarred the gate, and threatened combat if the skeletons wanted it open again. A portly guard seemed to be passed out, his giant belly exposed underneath his armour. Kyla, Omen, First and Harla, however, were extremely happy to be inside of the city, and after a few minutes, Kyron and Millie rejoined the party, Kyron holding a very bemused eagle on her arm. Ridiculous! Look at this human! Those aren't even her ears! The eagle is thinking aloud to Auspicious. He just shrugs. The party is reunited and information is shared between those involved, and everyone is filled in on the events that passed. Millie and Kyron tell the skeletons about their flight from the refugee camp and through the first time they had passed. Indeed, Kyron arrived in time to get the camp moving, but they were slow going, and when the whole camp arrived in that town, that siege army was only a few hours behind. Volunteers were taken at the town, drawn from both professional soldiers, local militia, and those of the refugees that wanted to fight, and the rest were sent onward towards Talaib. A few survivors from that delaying action reached Talaib and told of the horrors that befell those brave volunteers, and how the door knockers charged out of the tree line and down into the city to wreak havoc upon those below. After the door knockers had disrupted the front lines, orderly ranks of legionnaires marched down and mopped up what was left of the ragtag defenders. Warrior men, women and children were not spared, and all were cut down with thoughtless abandon. The skeletons are not super keen on this information, and Kyla looks down with guilt when she hears of it. Kyla had traded lives of hundreds for the life of one, but the skeletons console her, as it was her mama, and mamas are important too. The skeletons, however, are doing this just to make her feel better. The morality choice that they made was a tangled web of one. After this, Auspicious takes the horses and carriage to a local stable just down the road, and more or less spooks a poor lad into fixing the battered carriage. The lad almost faints when he sees the bullet hole, shrapnel damage, and all the cut marks on the wheels, but agrees nonetheless to make sure the spooky calcium boy doesn't take him to an early grave. The horses, more or less, check out in the stables, flopping down on straw and sleeping so hard not even Auspicious could roust them for a few days. Kyla and company make their way to an inn, and they themselves find the allure of soft beds and a bath too much to ignore. They had been sleeping outdoors without bathing for weeks now, Harla herself being a past slave, and they are quite fed up with the whole idea. Well, not first. This is the best living condition <laughs> she's had for years. <laughs> Rooms are bought, baths are had, blood washed away, and first is brushed out for the first time in her life. First hates it. <laughs> Omen has her shoulder wound looked at, and there's no helping the scar that she's going to have. Kyla says it's quite a rogue look for her, but Omen is not enthusiastic. The rest of the skeletons are fucking about, while a special skeleton wants to go and find his cows. In his journey, he gets lost in the Red Lantern District, those are like the Red Light District, nice. and gets turned around a few times. Agile and Rowdy have made their way onto the walls, and are scouting out the other siege camp and spot a sapper pit with a bunch of barrels near the back of the camp. The skeletons scritch at their chins and wonder if they can somehow find a long fuse in case those barrels are gunpowder and set the camp off. 
Auspicious Galton gets a message via Necroskype if he can find someone in town that sells fuses, and after asking around, he's more or less in the right area. Sex and gunpowder. Calliope Red Lantern District is one hell of a place. Auspicious pokes his nasal cavity a few times and stumbles upon a trail of black powder. Skeleton thunk. JPG. <laughs> he kicks at the powder with his boot and follows up the trail. It's leading to a door. He knocks a few times, but no answer. Next, he knocks with his torch hammer, and the door zips across the floor and bounces off something, cartwheeling through the air. As the skeletons step into the building, he notices it is full of barrels. Ah! Auspicious skeleton turns on his boot heel and clambers away as far as he can while maintaining line of sight to the doorway. When doing so, he sees shadows moving inside. Hey, you in there, stop moving! No answer. Come out here where I can see you. Fuck you! Auspicious skeleton ain't having that kind of disrespect and pulses a terror aura from whatever just is left in his torch hammer. Well, he has sufficiently spooked the saboteurs inside, and a small light is seen in the darkness. You'll never take us alive! Auspicious has a few moments to think about his decision and actions before the blast launches him out of the alleyway and into the main road, away, along with the brick and mortar of about four other buildings. Don't worry, the whorehouses are fine. <laughs> well, they're on fire, but they're fine. Auspicious skeleton sits up, groaning amidst the pitter-patter of bricks and body parts, his sockets focusing on the roaring fire, travelling along the street and other buildings. Agile, ready and drunk, see this huge fireball, and correctly summarise only one of their own could be behind it, running towards the flames from where they were. Auspicious stands up, shakily, while people with buckets and a fire wagon draw by draft horses clop by him. He is thankfully able to see a few figures running away from the fire instead towards it. Hey, stop! He shouts waveringly and runs after them, bouncing off of burning walls on his unsteady feet. The rest of the skeletons show up and help put out fires, but after a few minutes see Auspicious running after some people in black clothing. Intent on taking prisoners, Auspicious has succeeded in only killing one of the saboteurs so far, while another is missing both his feet. The other skeletons show up and begin their own version of mental warfare on the survivors for whatever reason. As Auspicious chases down and grappling hooks the other saboteur down from the wall he was trying to climb. They drag the broken men back towards the fires and hand them over to local guards, then go back to putting out the fires. Mysteriously, the whorehouses are put out the quickest, and the skeletons have cloth favours tied about them. Kyla hears the noise from her inn room with the rest of the gang, and opens the window blinds for a moment. Her eyes are filled with flames and the chaos of the outside. She slowly closes the blinds, wanting no part of it, and slips back under the blankets of her bed beside her mom. The next day, Agile Skeleton is exhausted and pars down in Kyla's room, his rifle cradled in his arms. The living members of the group all go off to have proper food for once, and Kyla takes the time to divvy up money to all the party members. Drunk takes his money and immediately goes down to the bar downstairs. Rowdy hears there's an old man who can work on guns down by the harbour and is able to pry Agile's rifle from his cold, dead hands before heading that way. Auspicious heads out to explore the town and check on all the fire damage. Drunk arrives at the bar and sees that it is staffed by two female feline beastmen. Women. Whatever. Drunk Skelton is elated at this and begins doing his best to impress the cat-eared barmaids. I lass, a fill me tankard, will ye? Will ye? <laughs> and he holds out his mug of mirth. The barmaids fill it up curiously and watches as the once cheap brew turns into something akin to drunkard's ambrosia. Drunk skeleton drinks it messily. The contents spill down his open mouth onto his clothes and armour. The barmaid pins her ears back and her face is one of horror as the skeleton makes a huge mess on her bar and floor. The brew still takes its effect, and Drunk Skeleton slams down a handful of silver onto the bar top. J- your drinks for everyone! Cheers erupt from the entire bar, packed with those who staunchly believe beer is breakfast of champions, and the whole place surges towards the bar. Rowdy Skeleton. It takes some time to wind through the city streets, but Rowdy eventually makes it to the harbour area and begins to set about finding the old man. Rowdy stands there for a moment amongst the teeming people and says loudly, 
Boy, I sure wish somebody could help me make this gun better. Everyone stands there, looking at the skeleton as if he has a few marbles loose inside that skull, before ignoring him and going about their business. The skeleton stands there embarrassed for a few seconds as some sailors point and laugh, but begins to actually comb the crowd. An hour or so passes, and with some luck, he finally finds the old man and is able to convince him to show him his collection, and maybe buy something from him as well. The old man is currently lugging around a full custom rifle that uses the spark of a stone to ignite its charge. And the damn thing is so long that the old man uses it as a walking staff. To say the walk is slow would be an understatement, as the old man could be outpaced by an infant. Time goes by at an agonising pace, and when they finally come to the front of the old man's door, Rowdy is rattling with impatience. Rowdy's anger is quelled when they enter the large house, and it is covered from wall to wall with rifles, ordnance, and weaponry from all over. You get quite some fancy things coming in and out of the harbour, you know, the old man says with a shaky chuckle, and sets his custom rifle into the wall slot, retrieving a cane that was sitting in a rifle slot next to the one he occupied. The two banter for a few minutes, before Rowdy gets to the point that he wanted the old man to mount a telescope to the top of Agile's matchlock. The old man is flabbergasted, you think I have scopes just lying around to mount on top of any old rifle, young feller? The old man motions towards a wall of scoped matchlocks and flintlocks, some supporting barrels longer than most teenagers. Each one of these was custom fitted and takes months to make, and that's not counting the time it takes for the opticals to be made and mounted. The old man is quite flustered now at the arrogance of Rowdy, his old bottom lip quivering wetly. Inwardly, Rowdy thinks, okay, boomer, <laughs> and raises a skeletal finger. How about a trade? Elsewhere. At the point, Agile is awake and fuming over his missing rifle. First is in the room, busily destroying the hairbrush that Omen and Kyla was torturing her with, her teeth gnawing on the wooden frame. First, where the fuck is my rifle? Agile screams, pointing a bony finger at her. First, no have rifle. She mutters through the hairbrush. Rowdy take rifle to ship in. The harbour? First just shrugs, still gnawing on the hairbrush. Agile fumes out of the room and takes off towards the harbour, pushing anyone who's dumb enough to get into his path out of his way. Rowdy. Mmm, yes, a fine specimen, this one. The old man has been looking over the Arderman's rifle carefully as Rowdy bounces on the balls of his feet, taking the rifle apart and inspecting the craftsmanship. He may not have been able to walk very fast, but those old hands sure could tear down and rebuild a rifle in a flash. I'll trade you, um, one of my earlier models, plus a fee, as it's still better than this rifle by many fair margin. Rowdy happily complies with this and hands over the gold needed to complete the transaction, now holding a telescopic flintlock rifle. Rowdy then spies a pile of junk in the corner of the house. After a bit more haggling, Rowdy gains possession of two pistols and a hand mortar after giving up his own fancier pistol and some gold and silver. Quite happy with his haul, Rowdy turns to leave. However, the door is open and there stands an extremely angry, agile skeleton. The argument is loud and many cunts are thrown about as Rowdy tries to defend his actions. Despite being given the rifle, agile is still furious Rowdy took it without his permission. It's almost coming to blows and the two skeletons are bickering so loudly they never see the old man working a crank. Down from the ceiling, a cannonade has been lowered on chains, and is now pointing at both the skeletons and the front door. Please take your lover's quarrel outside, the old man says with a chuckle, and lights a match with his fingernail. The two skeletons spill out of the house with their new firearms, but the argument doesn't stop, and the two make their way back to the inn with people giving them a wide berth. Auspicious. Auspicious has gotten lost again in the winding streets of Taleb, but has been following the sound of what seems like a market for live animals. At the same time, he is seeing more and more beast men and women, and follows the trail into what seems like an ethnic market. None of the stalls of spices and fancy cloth entrance him much, as he is set on finding out where these animals are. With a few questions, he is able to get concrete directions and comes out into a large, bizarre filled with exotic animals from all over the world. Gorillas, panthers, jaguars, hyenas, even an alicorn is seen in cages lining the road. Auspicious holds up his little fox familiar. See anyone you know? 
A beast man wearing the finery of a merchant approaches Auspicious, his hands held together in front of him. Hello, my fine calcium friend. How can we help you here today? Are you looking to perhaps sell your little friend here? The fox familiar looks unamused and throws a curse at the beast man. It seems Agile is rubbing off on him. Oh my, what a cantankerous little thing. Perhaps we can find you something better. Auspicious follows the man as they peruse the animals, talking prices and combat abilities. When they come to a great, heavily fortified crate that's chained to the ground with ground spikes. What the fuck is in there? The beast man begins to look nervous and unsure. <laughs> well, you see, uh, we don't know what it is. Please, please, what about this fine chromatic jaguar? Auspicious ignores the beast man and walks closer to the crate and tries to look in through one of the air holes. A loud screech pierces the air. <coughs> and there is a whirl of movement from inside. Whatever is inside charges forward and slams into the front of the crate causing people to go scattering every which way to get away from the rattling grate, even his familiar taken back. Holy crap, what is that thing? It says, shifting back into the safety of auspicious arms. The skeleton, however, hasn't moved, and is now staring into the eyes of something reptilian. A thought occurs to auspicious, and he pokes the end of his staff into the same hole in which the animal inside grabs onto it. Kill! Kill! is the first thought that enters Auspicious' skull as the link is formed, and the skeleton gives the staff a wiggle. That's very rude, you know. The being inside is taken aback by the sudden thought intrusion, and Auspicious can feel the pulling on the staff slacken a bit. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Usually there's a pointy bit in the end of these. Oh, I see it's a staff. I'm so sorry. I think I made teeth marks. The being begins to ramble. You see, I can't see anything in the box. I hate the box. I really don't like the box. Being stuck in this box forever. Auspicious looks back at the Beastman merchant, who is currently a fair distance away. Could you open this crate? The Beastman gives a nervous laugh and holds up his hands. <laughs> no, no, I'm not opening that. It has killed a lot of my seal team. The skeleton mmms aloud and turns back to the crate. Who are you? Ah. <laughs> I am me, of course. Haha, <laughs> I've always been me. Auspicious feels his staff tip, as if the creature is bowing slightly. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, fellow. You. It says again, and Auspicious seems to feel the creature warming up its thinking muscles and relaxing its maim kill destroy muscle. Could you by chance get me out of the box? I do not like the box. It smells like a worse version of me, you see. As the being continues to ramble, Auspicious turns back to the merchant. So what is this thing? The being inside hears this, and with its link, begins to regale Auspicious in its nicknames. Such gems as, Oh God, it has my leg, and Oh fuck, it's out. <laughs> <laughs> Auspicious is having to try and suppress a skeletal smile. We do not know what it is, but at this point, we're taking any offer we can get. Some haggling is done, and a very small amount of gold is given to the merchant. With this, Auspicious intimidates the being inside the crate enough times that it has failed to resist his terrorising will, and animal handling checks are rolled as well. But then also an actual negotiation takes place, and a chord is struck that, if the being also follows all orders, it will be allowed to eat any enemy it kills. It agrees enthusiastically, and Auspicious opens the crate. The being inside shakes its feathers a few times and slowly steps out into the sunlight. In Auspicious' arms, the fox familiar says in a bemused voice, It's like a murder chicken? Standing in the sunlight at five foot and preening its feathers, its great tail whipping back and forth, it's a purple velociraptor. Auspicious walks forward and begins to pet the raptor, who churs at the affection, and then leads it out of the bazaar and back towards the inn. As all the skeletons converge back in the inn, where Drunk is, and an unknown skeleton emerges from the waters of the harbour, seaweed gripping its iron knuckles and dangling from its skull. Furious skeleton has finally arrived. Agile, Rowdy and Auspicious were talking outside of the indoors about the murder chicken Auspicious had bought when Furious Skeleton trudged up to them, fishing out a small perch from his skull and spitting it out of his skull with a pup. The skeleton looked at the unknown skeleton, 
Well, hi. Furious asked them why the hell he was left behind, and you could almost see the visible question marks above their skulls. Turns out, Furious was awoken the same night the other skeletons were, being raised by a bit of shaky necromancy, and the power spilled over into his holding place. Unlike the other skeletons, he was bound in a solid iron casket that was spiked to the ground with chains around the lid. Furious in his past life was a character and had magically infused steel in his knuckles and kneecaps, which revived in his death. It took days to beat apart the casket he was sealed in, then many other days to follow the constantly moving pulse of the necromancer. When Furious finally found the city, he had to walk along the bottom of the bay in order to get in, as moving through the camps were too difficult, and he lacked any real armour or weaponry. The skeletons readily welcomed their new skeletal brother, Rowdy opened the door to the inn with a flourish. Let's introduce you to... Drunk. Inside the inn, mayhem was about. All the chairs had been aligned to make a jousting barrier. On top of Drunk's shoulders was a half-dressed beast woman, the feline barmaid, wielding a broomstick handle. And across from them was a guardsman, off duty, and atop his shoulders was a heavily tattooed sailor, wearing what appeared to be a dinner cloth cape, and also wielding a broomstick. Avachi roared drunk, and the cat girl atop his shoulder gave a battle cry. The two mounts charged at each other, the cat girl catching a broomstick to the tit while the sailor took it in his dick. <laughs> Narr! roared the cat girl barmaid, turned night in pain, and she swung the stick at the sailor who puffed heavily and had to be consoled by his mount. Around them, all the bar folk with also similarly dressed was just as rowdy having gotten quite smashed in the time since the other skeletons had departed. At a table far in the corner sat Kyla and her mom Harla, who sipped tea while Omen drank wine, and first lapped noisily at the tankard of something, all of them watching the festivities with open amusement. First was really getting into it, raising her fist and yelling, Now you fight to the death! Money on cat lady! No one noticed the skeletons walk in, but everyone noticed chicken. If there was a fantasy version of a record scratch, it would be invented right here. The chaos that erupted when everyone reacted to the murder file was furious. Men and women grabbing chairs and ready for battle. Chicken, however, pecked a plate of food and screeched happily. Kyla then saw Furious Skeleton and furrowed her brows. Who are you? Furious spoke to her in head via their link and she was flabbergasted. I don't even know who you are. If you were sealed in an iron casket, you must have been quite the bastard in your life. Regardless of that, she beckoned the skeleton forward and pulled out her little bag of bone dust, giving the skeleton a liberal sprinkling of the powder. As in the background, another hyena-like beast man winged a mug at chicken when the velociraptor got too close, who screeched in return. The two spoke for a short time and Furious was intent on helping the grip. A great skeletal grip hug happened and the grip was joined by Chiron, still adorned in all her lit shit, and Millie, sporting a new town dress and calf-high leather boots. The group shared breakfast, auspicious wrangled chicken, and the girls told the group about their adventures in the city. The skeletons as well told the group about the fire and explosion, which Kyla resolutely ignored and pretended she didn't hear, while she drank her tea, pinky out. Harla had cleaned up well and listened to both girls, holding her cup of tea in both hands, serenely and smiling wolfishly at their tails. A medical specialist had been paid, or threatened, to help with her face, and she looked many years younger, while some of her deeper scars remained. She looked almost like the mental image the skeletons had been sent during their rescue mission, and even the skeletons agreed. They'd have risked life and limb to protect the necromilf. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Kyla scowled violently at them when she first heard this nickname. <laughs> and the skeleton spent the entire morning picking up pieces of themselves that seemed to fall off randomly at will. The morning was almost picturesque as the inn was cleaned up and things went back to normal, despite Drunk wanting the party to continue, and the group had a small moment together in relative safety. Furious gave them shit for leaving him behind. Kyron and Millie laughed like teenagers again. It was nice. Too nice, it seemed. Chicken heard it first, and craned his head up from the mutton leg he was given to gnaw on. Big bird, he mentally said to Auspicious. Chiron heard it next, and spun her head towards the window. A horn, a war horn. Chiron was up in a flash and sprinting out the door, armour, weapons, and 
unlit lanterns jangling on her body as she sprinted. <laughs> the skeletons all stood at once. I trust you guys to take care of that, Kyla said with a small smile, and gave them a small wave. Millie gave a sad smile, knowing she again would be of little use. The skeletons ran off abreast, but then split off near the smaller side gate. The horn was coming from the main gate, and indeed other soldiers told them that enemy troop movements were coming in mass from that direction. Rowdy and Agile readied their weaponry and ran up the wall staircase towards the main gate, while the rest of the crew slipped out the side gate and made their flanking movements towards the main gate through the ruined outer districts. Rowdy and Agile came to a rattling stop when they reached a good vantage point and looked out over the no man's land. There were teams upon teams of ladder men, along with massive siege towers. Where the fuck were they hiding those things? mused Agile. And Rowdy shrugged, fingering his hand mortar in thought. Across the no man's land marched formations of legionaries and battle mages, as well as a group of door knockers in their super heavy armour. There were also lightly armoured men with the ladders, going for speed than sturdiness. The towers themselves also looked formidable, lumbering across the ground and swaying slightly over the small rises. Chicken, drunk, furious and auspicious came to the edge of the ruined district and also saw this, getting ready to attack when the main siege began. It didn't take long and soon great volleys of arrows whistled through the sky to rain down upon those advancing towards the walls and gate. The arrows plinking off the door knockers like rain and they walked through it like they believed it was little worth their time. The battle mages below hurled lightning and balls of energy at the walls, cracking off the stone harmlessly or frying men to a crisp if they made contact. When the ladders got close, the ground skeleton group launched their attack and caught many by surprise. Agile plinked away and sniped at battle mages, who had to huddle behind soldiers like meat shields in order to avoid skeleton angry gaze through his scope. Fucking cunts! The skeletons would mutter before a fancy flintlock device would actuate and send a lead letter of death to whoever was dumb enough to stick their head up. Rowdy seemed to be enjoying his new toy, sending lick grenades down into the packed ranks of troops and shredding them with much glee. His ammo was limited, however, and he waited for pack troops to get closer. On the ground, Chicken led the charge, screeching demonically and leaping upon soldiers and shredding them apart with his fangs and teeth. Fun! Fun, 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 fun! He would roar gleefully in Auspicious's head, who in turn cleaved through men like they were toys, rendering armour like tin metal. Furious Skeleton contented himself with punching through people, having to pause at times and wrench his fist from the faces of soldiers. He got tired of this and began the old-timed method of beating one motherfucker with another motherfucker and picking up dazed enemies by the feet and swinging them about as if they were a hammer. Drunk also had a ball, drinking heavily from his tankard and slicing at men with a short sword, belching noisily. Drunk was having quite a time watching Chicken rip people apart, just to pounce on another, when he saw a familiar face. A ladder crew was running up, who also saw Drunk, and slowed their pace, until they were only a few feet away. Standing before Drunk were the men from the slave camp, and at their lead was the man he had personally promoted that night. The men looked at Drunk Skeleton. Then to the other two skeletons beating the shit out of people. And then to the velociraptor currently chewing on a man's face as he screamed in pain and terror. Drunk had but a split second to react, but he leaped at his decision. Lads, come on now, I know you're a fair bunch. Drop the ladders, drop the armour and join the good side. Or else you end up like that poor bastard. Drunk motioned at the man now gurgling in his own blood while Chicken tore his face. Dicer rolled. The captain of the group looked around for a minute. Side-eyed drunk, then looked back to his men. Strip him. Arderman's armour flew to the ground until the men were only in their underpants, and they scrambled up an already placed ladder. Drunk called up to the wall. Don't hurt the naked ones! What do you mean, na- And the guard looked down to see a group of mostly naked men clambering up a ladder. Yeah, all right, I got it, he yelled out. And once the men were atop the wall, they kicked the ladder down before saluting drunk and running out of sight. Rowdy saw a pack of men trying to shield some battle mages and lit the fuse on a grenade. With a plunk, the grenade flew high and right, then caught the wind. No, 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 no! Rowdy yelled, hand in hand mortar to his bony cheeks as the grenade began to come back towards the wall. 
until it didn't. By sheer luck, a tower had gotten close enough to the wall that the grenade tinked off the lip of the drop ramp and tumbled gingerly inside the tower. From inside the tower came shrieks and yells of unveiled horror as the grenade tinked and thumped down the ladders of the siege tower before detonating near the middle. The explosion rippled along the tower, a spray of wood, metal and meat flying out from where the grenade cooked off. The tower top slothed for a moment before groaning and leaning hard forward. The construct shattered against the wall, raining men down upon other men who fled trying to avoid getting caught in the debris. When the middle was exposed, it was like someone had put beef in a blender, as many men caught the fragmentation at point-blank range. Noise, Agile quipped, and demanded a shot at the hand mortar. The fight soon came to the walls, as ladders and other siege towers made contact but those in the ground were causing massive casualties under the weight of their assault. And the more Auspicious killed, the more he powered up, and the more terror he caused. Chiron was fighting on the walls as well, hefting her stolen battle axe and simply waiting in front of a ladder. After a few chops, the ladder became unused, and Chiron was very put out, kicking it back off the wall in a huff. The siege stalled for hours, no one making gains on either side, as the wall filled with dead Arterman soldiers, before a horn was blown, and the attackers pulled back, many scrambling back down the siege towers or ladders, a wolf in sheep's clothing. The skeletons and defenders thought they had won, and were cheering. Agile and Rowdy high-fived. Mr. Rowdy! Mr. Agile! Rowdy and Agile turned and saw Millie, running along the walls and hopping over the bodies of the dead. In her arms she held a great sack of supplies, mostly grenades, waving and running towards him, her dress blowing in the high wind. Soldiers made room for her as she passed, and the two skeletons ran towards her, waving back. The skeletons on the ground felt a tremor. Furious, drunk and auspicious looked at each other, wiping blood from their hands and blades, while chicken chewed on a soldier's corpse noisily. The tremor grew, until even the walls felt it, and Millie came to a stop, as Agile and Rowdy remembered something. The sapper pit. The ground began to bow and dimple in a line towards the walls, and the rumble intensified, the earth getting sucked inwards. Agile and Rowdy ran towards Millie. Millie! Millie, run! Agile screamed and slung his rifle over his shoulder. The ground skeletons ran towards the dimpling and cavering ground, watching the speed at which it raced with their own undead terror. Millie was smiling, looking confused at Agile, before looking down at the rumbling and shaking walls. Millie! It was as if time slowed down. Below that section of the wall, barrels of gunpowder were set off and the ground erupted as if the earth had sneezed. The wall section lifted and Millie looked up, suddenly afraid. She gradually rose into the air with other soldiers as the shock wave rippled up, carrying stones, men and supplies into the air as if they weighed nothing. Agile Skeleton leaped dancing on rising stones, and slammed hard into Millie, her bag of goods between them. Agile had no eyelids, but he squeezed them together as she squeezed Millie, and burned a favour. They fell towards the ground, great pieces of wall raining down around them, smashing together, and men and women screamed. Millie closed her eyes and put her head into Agile's chest. If only I had stayed put, she thought helplessly, as the wind rippled through her hair. Agile's prayers were answered, and the tinkling laughter he heard before on that dark night came back into his head. Well used, the lipless elf said to him in his head, and winked, her long, delicate fingers reaching out and turning the skeleton so Millie was facing up and he was on the bottom. He also felt like they were falling slower, but everything felt slower in this moment. He pulled Millie close and hit the ground the stones of the once mighty wall impacting all around them. Rowdy was blown right the fuck off the wall, rattling through the air and landing with a whoomph on the ground. Ow! The skeleton pulled his nugget of a head from the ground and checked his weapon as the other skeletons ran over, helping him up. They had to dodge some pieces of wall here and there, but made it out okay. Hole! Chicken said and ruffled his feathers. Sure enough, there was a great ragged hole in the fortification and the battle horns from the Arterman's forces rang out again, and the soldiers began to advance back towards the wall. Pikes! was bellowed from the other side of the wall, 
and the forces of Taliab march towards their hedgehog formation and move towards the ragged gap. Ajal shook his head, rubble falling away, and looked around, hearing the echo of orders and horns darting around them. Mr. Ajal, I can't feel my foot, Millie said, coughing harshly from atop Ajal. Ajal was relieved to hear her breathing, let alone talking. They fell so far. Wait, her foot? Ajal sprung up and held Millie still, looking around, and if he had lungs that could draw breath, he would have choked on it. A chunk of wall had come down too close and slammed down on Millie's leg just below her left knee. Damn. The heavy stone had sheared away bone and flesh and now there was a ragged, ruined stump just below her joint. Agile and healed through his teeth and began to tear at his clothes, making a tourniquet hastily and stopping her bleeding. He then lifted her and rattled out of the ragged hole, barely squeezing by the pikemen as they moved into the breach. Millie is hurt, I'm taking her back, Agile said over the necroscope, and Rowdy filled them in on what happened on the walls. As Agile limped back, popping his bones back into place, the other skeletons ran forward, flanking the incoming troops that got too close to the gap. They were enraged and took no mercy on those that fell upon. They also felt Kyla suddenly surge up in power, and soon her presence was felt on the battlefield, along with many other powerful forces awakening in the city. The walls of Talib had been breached. Agile held Millie close, checking her wound as he walked. Mr. Agile, I'm cold, she murmured, and Agile hushed her, brushing her filthy hair out of her face and finally making his way towards the little siege hospital. The nurses were busily bandaging wounds or amputating limbs, their neat herd garments bloodied, and their hair poking out from underneath as they worked without pause. One nurse saw Agile and bustled over, gingerly taking the girl into her arms. The nurse had a lot of muscle for a woman, and hefted Millie like she was a child. She stepped back and nodded at Agile. We've got this, Mr. Skelton. You head on back and do what you gotta do. Take care of her. I'll be back, he said bitterly, and hefted the supply sack. He and it were covered in Millie's blood, and he opened it as the nurse strode off, calling for a healer and a surgeon. Inside were dozens of hand grenades for Rowdy's hand mortar, and Millie had drawn faces on all of them. Smiley faces, frowny faces, snarling faces, all in chalk doodle lines. She had also rounded up powder and shot for their guns, as well as a drawing that lay tucked inside. Agile reached inside and pulled out the slip of paper and unfolded it. It was a little girl with face tattoos, holding hands with two skeletons, one with a long rifle and one with two pistols. The skeleton's bony fingers crinkled the paper as he clutched it angrily, but deftly folded it back into a small square after a few seconds of looking at it. Agile tucked the drawing into his pocket of his padded under armour and hefted his rifle, jogging towards the front lines. Behind him, Kyla, Omen and First. The skeletons were cutting a swath through the troops, as was Chicken, bodies littering the ground behind them as they moved to their next victim. Rowdy had grappled a man and was using him as a human shield while firing his pistols at the enemy, making sure the barrel was next to the man's face and ear. He was now blind and deaf, flailing at anything dumb enough to get near and at the skeleton holding him. Drunk saw the door knockers were eagerly running towards the hole in the wall and took a long pull from his mug, which he had filled with blood in order to make more brew. Thinking back to the pummeled corpses of the little town he investigated, he hooked his tankard on his belt and burned a favour as well. He didn't see it, but atop the wall a bald monk smiled. The aura was devastating with a natural 19, and not a single ogre managed to pass a constitution save to not pass the fuck out in the middle of a battlefield. DM VING! <laughs> <laughs> Drunk skeleton roared in approval, as did the walls. He simply say the skeleton hip thrusted at the bunch of ogres, and they then fell over unconscious. Oh, very well done, a female voice called out over the wind, and the grip turned. Striding towards them was the Mistress of Flesh and her paladin consort. The Mistress of Flesh slid a finger across the huge scar that adorned her once pristine abdominals, and pointed her daggers at the skeletons, revenge finally at hand. The paladin held his hammer in front of himself and it began to glow as he invoked the will of his god. Auspicious decided to burn his favour point 
and instead of asking his patron deity for help, he sent out an open SOS signal throughout the cosmos in hopes someone powerful would listen and give him a boon. An old god heard, one of the first, many say, but a long forgotten and powerful waning since the dawn of stone and flint. Auspicious skeleton's gore torch began to emit flames, and soon the entire head of the torch was awash in crackling like of fire, furious, still having his fist stuck in a soldier's face. Auspicious and drunk, readied themselves as chicken pounced and screeched in the background, a chorus of screams erupting from his victims as he chewed and clawed. The fight began without a word, just the thumping of feet and rushing bodies. Kyla could feel the discharges of energy in the distance, and shoved her way through the pike lines casting great crackling purple skulls of necrotic energy up and over the heads of the pikemen. He watched as the skulls danced, crackled and swallowed the bodies of men. As the skulls would bounce away, the lifeless body would clatter to the ground, not to move again. Yes, one soldier muttered, and actually hopped out of Kyla's way. First an omen pounced the head of the necromancer and engaged in scattered duels amongst the levelled pikes dipping and ducking here and there to avoid the point tips to stab and slash at anything that got near, making a path for the necromancer. Kyren was not to be outdone, mimicking agile and rowdy. She leapt from the walls with a whoop and crashed into a gaggle of trips, the whole bundle of bodies falling to the ground stunned. Kyren realised having organs made that particular move quite dangerous and heaved for breath with those around her. After an awkward couple of minutes she stood, still wheezing and holding her ribs, before drawing out her stolen battle axe. Where she spun, men died. Aja walked forward as well, lighting grenades with his flintlock mechanism and tossing them into the formations of troops. The no-scoping soldiers that tried to charge him and got too close. Aja ran over to Rydie, having broken his flint and needing to replace it, and used them for cover as he did. Rydie saw the battle going down with the other skeletons and felt like he needed to help. Watching Furious catch a hammer to the chest and fly across the grass, and Auspicious doing his level best not to get stabbed. Here, hold this, he said to Agile Skeleton, and tossed the blind and deaf man at him. The enraged soldier screeched in fury and grabbed at Agile, who was trying to put his flint in the hammer. Agile had to fend off the man whose fingers gripped his empty eye sockets and wrenched back in his head. God damn it, why did you throw him at me? Rowdy however had already run off, and Agile had to resort to beating the man to death with the butt of his rifle, the final crunch of iron butt plate and skull marking the end of the soldier's suffering. The fighting in the wall gap was relentless, as unwavering pikemen and unyielding legionaries stabbed and hacked each other. Bodies piled up, soldiers striding atop dead fellows and enemies that made up the ever-growing mountain of the dead. The duel amongst the heroes was going as well as it could, really. The paladin was causing constant radiant damage to the skeletons, whose bones smoked and sizzled as they attacked. Auspicious found out the daggers of the mistress were magical, as even if they touched his bones, the pain was bizarrely effective, and he had to make constitution saves to avoid being stunned. The mistress was able to block his attacks, but the torch fire's boon would detonate on the block causing both of the fighters to be engulfed in brief explosions of flames. While Auspicious wasn't affected much, the flesh of the mistress would burn and blacken at every detonation, and the flower petals of Auspicious's flower crown would shine bright and wrap in the light. (laughs) After hearing the status of Millie, the skeletons were almost mechanically savage in their attacks, their skull devoid of emotions except for Furious Skeleton having drawn an angry eyebrows with blood from fallen enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Furious and drunk, both sizzling from radiant damage, clapped each other's forearms and nodded to each other. The paladin was too holy, too heavily armoured, and not taking much damage. It was time to enter the bone zone! Yeah. The paladin drew himself up, having thrown a heel over to the mistress to mend her blackened flesh, and turned to invoke a smite at the skeleton. What he didn't expect was the two skeletons to have dropped their weapons slash human shield hammers and lunge at him. Furious was the first to make contact, tackling the paladin and going for his hammer hand. The paladin didn't falter, but looked down at the skeleton rattling furiously and prying at his hands. What the? Ah, get off it! Get off! Get off it! The paladin whipped his arm back and forth, 
The skeleton howling as well as actually biting at the paladin's hands. His old leather boots bapping the paladin in the head as he flailed the skeleton. Drunk was right after and leg tackled the paladin, taking him to the ground. Rowdy saw this and took the moment to let fly a shot that downed the paladin. However, the shot was ill-advised and pieces of Furious' shoulder blade flew off into the grass. Rowdy slowly put the gun away into his belt and instead drew out a dagger, looking back and forth to make sure no one noticed him take a piece out of his fellow skeleton. Agile Skeleton dug himself in behind a mound of dead soldiers and began to plink at battle mages who attempted to throw lightning and other such spells into the gap and all the minor NPC party members. After a few shots, the game of whack a mage was invented and soon they were all dunking behind the heavily armoured soldiers or stone debris in fear of the sharpshooter. Auspicious whipped his torch back and forth, having figured out he can throw fireballs with it in his duel with the flesh mistress. The mistress easily dodged these at times, but one fireball goes wide and impacts the middle of the paladin's furball, setting the ground and the combatants on fire for a brief moment and doing fire damage to all involved. Auspicious was losing the fight as the health point loss climbed, and he called upon his new friends to help. I cast chicken, roared Auspicious. <laughs> and pointed his hand at the flesh mistress. She was stunned by how ludicrous that sentence was. What kind of stupid spell is chick? Was all she got out before getting body slammed by the velociraptor. The two rolled along the ground as she and chicken shrieked, the flesh mistress getting a few stabs in while chicken clawed and bit at her, his purple feathers glinting in the sunlight. High dexterity foes whirled and tumbled as Chicken kept pinning her to the ground, the flesh mistress trying to get space. She had no words, only anguish and pained battle roars. Auspicious took that moment to walk over, patting out small fires on his clothes and made his way to the paladin fight. The paladin got off a smite, catching drunk full in the chest as he attempted to snap the elbow of the paladin. The holy burst washed over the skeleton, Smoke fuming off his skeletal body to the point it looked like he was a being of shadow, and the loss of HP was felt harshly. Furious saw this and thought up a desperate plan. A side note, before we go on, his plan was to cause massive internal and external bleeding, as well as a large amount of pain. Anyway, the skeleton released the hammer arm and clambered over the paladin, hastily tearing away armour before finding his target. The paladin's ass. True. There was less armour here, and it was easy to get into. Oh, not get into, Jesus. It was easy to get to. <laughs> and desperate times call for desperate measures. Furious's iron-plated knuckles glinting in the sun as he reared back, ready to punch this paladin's asshole so hard he could use his body as a puppet. But fate was not on his side. The paladin jerked, sending drunk rolling slightly, and bounced off of Rowdy enough to mess with his strike as smoke enveloped him. Instead of punching the paladin in the asshole, he punched him instead in the taint. <laughs> <laughs> His skeletal thumb cave diving inside the paladin's rectum. Furious stared down angrily, eyebrowed at him. Sorry. <laughs> I can't hear paladin's rectum without laughing. <laughs> Furious stared down angrily, eyebrowed at what he had done and pulled his hand away, wiping it on the grass. Effective though... As the paladin was in high amount of pain and shock, allowing Drunk to get the upper hand and fracturing the paladin's elbow, Rowdy then leaped in, plunging his knife down into the paladin's helmet eye socket. It was a flippable visor, but whatever. The knife dug down deep past the metal and burrowed into the paladin's eye after a second push, blinding him in one eye and covering his face in blood. Oh, for fuck's sakes, Rowdy! Drunk breathed out heavily, eyeing Rowdy's now smoking form before leaning down and ripping the helmet visor up. He realised he didn't think that through, as the visor gripped the dagger, which, when swung out, ripped out the paladin's ruined eyeball and scattered it across Drunk's waist and leg. The paladin opened his mouth to invoke healing, but only got out a single word before Drunk's fist crashed down into the paladin's mouth, shattering most of his teeth and choking him. He was going for a kill strike, breaking the paladin's nose and sending the bone into his brain, but the smoke from his own body was even affecting his aim, it seems. Auspicious limped over, 
and administered the coup de grace, hammering down into the paladin's back and finishing him off. Also detonating another fireball in process. Furious stood up, sizzling, then fell over backwards, knocked out. Drunk now has 2 HP left, Auspicious has 8 HP left, and Rowdy is down to half. Auspicious turns around and looks at Chicken. Where's Chicken? Chicken, with 3 HP left after his scuffle with the Flesh Mistress, is now dragging her corpse away. She was fast, but she wasn't chicken fast, and had no armour or backup heels to help her in the fight. A bite to the neck and a scratch to the tummy was all it took to do her in, and now she was lunch. Food, 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 yummy food, yum, 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 was all that Auspicious heard when connecting with the Velociraptor. He was happily plodding away with the corpse of the flesh mistress, holding it by the foot and her entrails untangling along the ground as he ran. Rowdy leapt up, eyeing the knives in her clutched hands, and sprinted over to them both. Chicken, chicken, you bring that here! Chicken saw the skeleton running after him and ran faster, leaning into the run. The dead mistress's head and shoulders dragged along the ground as Chicken ran, her face getting covered with the blood and gore that was everywhere. Her eyes stared lifelessly at Rowdy, her lips parted, as if in a last, final whisper. With her generals dead and heavy hitters still fucking unconscious, the will of the Ardermans broke, and a full rout was now rapidly forming. Kyla striding out in front of the pike formation and throwing up her hands, sent more dancing skulls to chase at the men like hounds, felling dozens at a time. First saw this and actually squatted down to sit in the ground, hiding her eyes. Aww, oh, she's scared. She was pretty spooked. <laughs> Omen, bloody and panting, jogged over beside Kyla, leaning over her with hands on her knees. Kyron was looting dead men already, having a small sack full of wedding rings jangling in her hand as she stepped from body to body. Agile Skeleton was still sniping battle mages, reloading his rifle with contempt before setting it back down in his makeshift armrest, a literal arm he tore off a corpse, and sending another lead ball into the back of another wildly running battle mage. Reloading again, he looked over at the other skeletons, whom were all smoking heavily from the body, and they looked at him. Mad cunts, he muttered and cocked the hammer in his rifle. All those moments will be lost in time.